Oh, jeez, yeah. turn to ban. Dire yeah. team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. No. Oh, geez, turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds, Dire <laughs> Team Pick. Where it is OG facing off against Team... Ten seconds remaining. OG's turn to pick. Ancient apparition. OG's turn to pick. Lich. Strong team that's put up good results recently, and they've looked quite strong when they get the draft that they want. How you doing, Steven? Dire team pick. I'm doing good. I'm just, uh... Earth spirit. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. OG's turn to I am to ready pick. for this. I am, uh, excited to see how this match is going to play out simply because, well, like you said, you know, King Glenn on the rise they're improving rapidly right now and i mean og kind of trailing behind right now kind of need to hit their stride Ten remind everybody out there that this uh they did end up losing a match yesterday uh against mouse we didn't get a chance to watch those so we don't know the necessarily the circumstances around it and we haven't seen them play yet uh but this is certainly a team that people have come to expect big things from and people might not be too familiar with team king one the polish dota 2 team uh that have been playing together for a very long time for me, at least, the two standout players have been Patos and Nisha on the mid and off lane. And particularly Nisha is, is I, I don't want to say like a phenom or anything, but he he has been looking like a star player on this team. Yeah, definitely. Especially with some of the heroes that they give him. They're not afraid to pick some of the heroes that are not seen very often anymore. You know, the Windrunner, for example. I mean, he plays a very good Windrunner. And... That's kind of how the, the team plays right now. They revolve Dire themselves around Nisha's uh, oh, flashy mid plays as well as just overall solid carry mids, I guess, I suppose. Yeah, and I mean, as on the other side of this, you've got OG who have replaced a very integral part of their team in Ana, now have resolution here. Um, and regardless of you know what you think of, of relative skill levels of a player, uh, it is still going to be tough to sort of change out something like a mid in that respect because they did play around Ana a lot in a lot of their games um and they need to figure out like the new way that they want to play with resolution do you think that it's a pretty big deal changing on a player like that and it could have go through some growing pains yeah i think i think so i i i think it's uh definitely something that they're going through right now they're gonna have to take some time and actually get into practice to back. kind of figure out a new way to play around their new member in resolution it's it's definitely not going to be the same thing because a good example would be like there's no longer the Ana Invoker to rely on, right? Resolution. I think he does play Invoker, but uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and say that it's probably not at the same level as Ana. And seconds. because of that, they're going to have to find alternatives to see how they can bring out the strengths of, uh, of the team. For sure. Absolutely. And... Well, we do have the OG. beginnings of the draft now. Lich or Spirit opening for OG with an Ancient Apparition and a Pugna pick for Team Kingwin. So the Jerax Earth Spirit, apparently they feel comfortable giving it away, Team Penguin do, and they might have to suffer the consequences of that. Also, Necrophos, Earthshaker, Viper, and PL all banned out. Nothing really uh, that weird so far, with the exception of probably the Pugna. Um, why do you think Team Penguin are so uh, okay with taking this in the first round? Um, I'm going to have to assume that they did their research. I think they 
probably like this hero for various reasons. I'm just gonna have to assume that they it's something that they practice a lot with and it does always oh, offer quite a bit as well to, to any given draft. Venomancer. Venomancer is gonna come out. God, look at this. So Bat Rider into Venom immediately. Team King when they know what they want and they're picking it quick. You know, I, I think that a lot of people will have not been watching all of the Dota 2 over the past couple days. Like, with so many different matches on, it's impossible to keep up with all the games that are happening. Um, but Kinguin have, like, a very specific style. They cover each other a lot. Um, they tend to build this, like, really strong laning heroes. And, oh, Weaver now going to get taken for OG. Hmm. Pretty solid core against the Venomancer. You know, even if you get galed, it's not like it's going to affect you when it comes to using your Shikuchi. So Ten seconds probably remaining. that kind of line of thought going in with this Weaver. Five yeah. seconds well, and they really don't have any lockdown for it at all. Like you're saying, it's, uh, it's going to be quite easy for him to just kind of get whatever he wants. I guess the main concern I have is with a Pugna and a Venomancer already, could Team Kinguin think about trying to come online before the Weaver even ends up being able to have items and then try to take down like all those tier two towers around the map. Um, I mean, if you don't have a way to stop the Weaver, you're gonna have Weaver issues eventually. And I think this is like the perfect game where you can just pick up a Diffusal Blade and not worry about Decrepify. Yeah. And if you hit the back lines, I mean, this AA is gonna get three, four shotted by a Weaver. So. Okay. Uh, I don't really think you can outscale a Weaver before he comes online. This Weaver is definitely going to be on par in terms of farm, unless you manage to pick something oh, that can geez. actually Time punish him heavily bad. in lane. That's a decent pickup right there. Will most likely be a Kekor Rubik. Um, I think Alicia has pr pretty consistently been the Ancient Apparition player, as the Alchemist is going to be banned out as well. OG not wanting to run into any of those shenanigans. Um, that's kind of okay for Weaver. You know, you can steal Sakuchi and uh, also the nice lockdown with the lift there into, well, I mean, a lot of damage from the rest of King One. I think they need a core. I think they need a Sven or something. <laughs> really? I, th I, I feel like they need a core or maybe Wraith King even. Okay, they're going to go with Lone Druid. I, I think, actually, I think this is okay too. A little bit scary against a Bat Rider Lich, but. I mean, is, it definitely is an option for dealing with the uh, the Weaver as well as well as having a roar for um, deflecting a Weaver remaining. or a Bat Rider. Isn't Weaver really good against Lone Druid in lane? Five seconds remaining. I feel like I remember this that like you can sort of skirt around the bear and just punch the Lone Druid a bunch. Oh, oh God! Your heroes. Oh, this All is right, some classic OG stuff right here. Yeah, Arc Warden last pick. Do you like it? What are they looking to do with these heroes? I mean, it's just what, how they like to play, right? OG has always been a team that, if it's not Illusions, it's Arc Warden. They always like to have a hero that can split push the map by himself without needing to put themselves at risk. And also Siege without putting themselves at risk. It, this is just the way they like to play, I feel. Well, likewise, Team Kinguin, they have a very push-oriented lineup. I wonder if they, on OG, have enough uh, sort of early game presence to deal with the pressure that's going to come out because this is going to be a lone druid going that Midas into a Radiance and then hitting that timing to try and take down towers and uh, really punish this from OG. Do you think they have what it takes? Uh, what, what's it going to sort of depend upon? Or do I have it wrong? Is that not really the way that Team King are going to play, do you think? No, they'll, they'll definitely apply pressure early on, I, I, I think. It's like, you might, you might as well do it, right? Because your heroes allow you to do so. And you don't want to give OG too much space to, to farm up on this Arc Warden as well as Weaver. Otherwise, you're just going to have like the worst time ever when it comes to uh, taking objectives if you want to push high ground. Right. But okay. well, I mean, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to see. I think for the most part, uh, OG are just going to try to win the laning phase, especially because they have a Lich on their side. And just do their best to make sure that S4 has a good start. I think there should be quite a bit of stacking going on for S4 to fall back onto if he does need it, yeah. or even if he doesn't need it, just to propel him towards that Blink Dagger as quickly as possible. Prepare right. for battle. All right. 
Early movements out. Jerax going to place down one of these wards to block off the camp, most likely, as well as get some decent vision. AA also going to be moving in here. We'll see where Alicia decides to put his. He's going to be there behind the tower, and I don't think he was spotted while well, Jerex able to get it right on the edge. Some good vision of this lone druid top, the exotic deer. Um, and I don't think... Yeah, they don't quite spot the AA yet. I think that they did, actually, with the Earth, Shake, Earth Spirit, maybe. And now pinging out that there might be a ward there? Did they guess? Oh, fly. Did you do it? One time. Does he know? He's thinking about it. There's another ward placed down over here that I think Resolution spotted, so they'll at least be able to get that D ward. I don't think they spotted it. No? They're pinging it. I think he spotted it. No, because the way the way Rubik played that made it so that it's not very obvious. Okay. Because because like if you have a ward there, right, you're never gonna walk up the staircase. But Rubik walked up the staircase anyways. So resolution has to oh. think that okay the there's no way he would use it. He saw me, so there's probably no ward. There. Exotic deer and it's getting chased down right now. Three stacks about to be four. He's gonna go down first blood. Drawn by S4, and that is a great start to this game. And Alicia gonna have to cut his way through the trees here. He's gonna try and take that one away. Dodges for the moment. Jerex, oh, though, going for the body blocks. He fully blocks him in. Oh, Jerex, they have to use a second tango and to no avail. S4 gonna maybe find the... No, it's not quite there. That was so close. But now you're out of tangos as an AA. All right, that sucks. He's, he's gonna have a tough lane. Yeah, and the thing is, S4, he manages to get this entire creep wave, so this is going to be a very quick level 2 for him. Jirax is going to make his way back and heal up. And then, oh, he's not going to go back, actually. He's just going to tango up slowly. Yep. And with this level 2 on the Bad Rider, I mean, this could be very problematic for these supports if they want to zone out this Bad Rider. Yeah. Well, they do end up getting the D ward there. I think Fly waited until he saw the uh, creep camp not spawning, and then he went for it. But it is going to be uh, Lich and Weaver versus the Venomancer in the bottom lane. Where do you feel like we're going to see a lot of our actions? Is it just wherever Jerex goes on his Earth, Earth Spirit? Oh, this top lane. Okay. We're, we're already seeing action. S4. S4. Trouble. Oh, he is going to end up finding the kill. Yeah, the chilling touch, very hard to deal with. As well as, you know, having three ranged heroes in the lane and a bear. Roll in. Finding Nisha, the slow is going to be there. He doesn't have level 2 for the kickback, but Nisha's still in trouble. He actually turns to fight this. Almost able to take down another one, and they force out the follow-up salve. Nisha going to get, not get hit by that, actually. Nisha's going to be a liver. And he'll pop the salve after the fact. That was really well played by Nisha. He realizes that if he continues to run, the flux is just going to get him in the end. So he turns around, mans up. Doesn't hit the blast, but because of... Uh... Oh. Him manning up, he just he manages to survive that. Oh, S4. Bottom lane, actually. Patos is going to die. Might have been able to deny himself, but yeah, S4 is trying to chase down Alicia here, but it is not going to work. So, S4 heading back to lane while bottom lane Veno ended up going down. Arms for the dead. Mid lane. Might see some action? No. Oh, by the way, he did end up dewarding it, so I think you were right. Yeah. Good yeah. cake core here. Do they have any vision of this? Radiant, they have this ward over on the high ground, and it's going to be taken down now. Immediately taken down. And, well, Nisha, 14-3 and three versus the 11-3 and three of No-Tail. They're trying to kill this Arc Warden here. And if this is such a difficult kill, though. Yeah. All right, they're getting ready to dive. Uh oh, top lane. They pull him back wow. in, though. This might end up being no tail going down. Can they kill him off in time? The right clicks are there. They're just going to dive him under tower. In the meantime, S4 is going up here, trying to take down Exotic here, and they will find that kill. And then also, was there another one? No, that was it. AA just died to the tower after okay. no tail goes down. So. Got it. I mean, I think that's definitely worth it, right? No, Arc Warden going down for the uh, for two, two kills in return. I mean, that's. We'll yeah. be happy with that. And he's just going to take a little bit of some damage here as well. Able to sidestep away from most of those spark wraiths. Not all of them. 
And No-Tail getting a couple of denies. They have access to the shrine in a little bit over a minute. But this is the tough one right here for Nisha. Any rotation, he could be in trouble. But we'll have that bottle brought out. And getting healed back up. That should help. Interesting to see that Ancient Apparition does not have any levels of the uh, the cold feet. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But on the on the other hand, you know, if you decrypt someone and you ice vortex them, and that that blast is gonna do a lot more than 175 damage. Yeah. Well, in bottom lane, Pato should be able to deal pretty well with resolution pushing the tower. He can just spam out these wards and likely have a decent time for himself. AA is going to have to sort of mirror the movements here with Rubik. And with Earth Spirit coming into lane also, you need to be a little bit careful. I don't know if they spotted Earth Spirit quite there or not. Doesn't look like it. They're sort of waiting they're, they're for a counter initiation. Out. Yeah. So how do you feel both teams feel about the, the game so far? Is one side maybe a little bit happier than the other? Um, oh. Nisha, rolling kick. They find it, but the turnaround. They're going to be able to bring down Jerex right here, I believe. Misha still taking some damage, but he ends up decrepping himself, staying alive. They bait out the rotation, and they find the kill, and now going to shrine. Top lane, S4, in a bit of trouble. He's going to have to get this kill, but I don't think that's going to be the case, right? Right? Oh, what? Oh, my goodness. He lives. And Jerex, he's going to get entangled what? now. Uh, this guy roots a lot. Jerax is going to be able to get the walk away for the moment, but if he gets another root here, I would they're so going in with the bear. Uh, he's not going to. Rubik and AA, though, they're wrapping around. They want to go for this. Oh, Jerax, he might get just shot. Uh, They only have one point right now, but now they see him, and diving for Exotic Deer. They're almost able to get the kill. He's going to be able to oh, go for the stun. Target. Not going to hit. Exotic Deer living yet again. They run through. They find the kill onto Jerex. And now, S4, where's he going to go? They use the fear on him and going to be able to lift. Pull it back in. They find that kill as well. The supports oh, that is for Kingwin. They've been doing it. Funny enough, OG are still ahead in net worth. But it, it really hurts to have S4 not having the best of starts, especially since the supports were gone from lane for such a long period of time. Uh, he had a decent amount of time to 1v1 the bear, but I mean, now all of a sudden the bear is level 6 and he is still sitting at level 4. Yeah. So, six minutes into it, 4 to 5. The net worth just about dead even. Experience maybe a little bit into Kingwin's favor. But the question is is always how do you transition these into like the later stages as another D ward is gonna come through and Nisha may be in a little bit of trouble. He decides to turn in fight, just gonna try and suck off, see if he can kill off that lich. The lich is going to live. No tail takes the kill onto the Pugna, so nice catch up there. And Alicia having oh, to Alicia dodge oh, away. God, he's so stuck. <laughs> he's in mid no man's land, but we'll still be able to escape and just gonna stand by his creeps here as the flux goes on. And he'll be able to get out of there, I think. Jerex, does he roll for this? He has roll back up in two. No such luck. He's sitting behind the tower. Wait, where is he? Oh, he what? He he what? He has one rock. Okay, you got him. Okay, Jerex. How did he? He didn't see him, did he? I No, he did. There, there, you see this ward up here uh, where the bounty is? Did, did the I, ancient apparition walk up there? Man. So Yeah, I think so. Not giving up on the play, Jerex. So eight minutes in, and we're taking a look at some of the net worths now. It is still OG with a couple of these heroes on top, but there's this large contingent of Kingwin that has decent net worth, and uh, really the Rubik's been one of the higher net worth supports as well, as Nisha's going to get chased down again, and Invis Rune will get picked up. He's thinking about chasing this. Chase down this list. Yeah. Why is gone? Oh, Jarek shows up. Yeah, Nisha's in trouble. And Alicia shows up as well, but it is not enough. Does a lot of damage, that Pugna. But can't quite finish it off. And Kekor is going to get brought down as well. 
Well, two for one trade. I think uh, OG are going to be happy Radiant's with that. Game is still is extremely close, though. S4 is doing a good job in catching up. He's actually about 1,200 away from his Blink Dagger, so he's on track for a decent timing. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the nice part about it. You get that at the next couple minutes, and you can start making moves around the map, finding pickoffs onto people. Also, Arc Warden, uh, he's still a ways away from his Midas, actually. No Tail would love to be able to pick that up a little bit quicker. Only 300 gold in the bank, but he had to go for the Aquila early, and, well, there's another rotation in. They want to try and shut down No Tail. Do they realize that this is coming, though? I don't think they do, and well, he's walking in. There's the smoke broken. Can they get him in time? They, all right, force out the Spark Wraith, or rather the ulti, and they're immediately going to run away. More Spark Wraith being thrown. Man, Kingwood just running away as every damn person showed up here in the mid lane. Kcor going to be pulled down. He throws out a Fade Bolt. They do have a lift now. Going to pull back into Arc Warden. He's in trouble. He's going to go down. So the gank doesn't work, but somehow it does. And Pathos also made a Gale throw out there. He's going to keep on getting a couple of these wards down. But Nisha walks forward, blows up Fly. Resolution is showing up now. I don't know if this is the fight you really want to take. Uh, they're diving for him, but it might be able to kill off Rezo. They're just going to heal nope. back up Alicia. <laughs> Nisha, making it happen. Radiance top tower ah, this is a, a really interesting game to watch OG play. I, I don't think I ever see OG playing this aggressively right off the bat. Well, S4, he's going for this. He's got the haste. No. Oh, my oh, what? Oh, my God. How does that happen? He's going to end up dying to the Fade Bolt or just the right clicks. So, first of all, Exotic Deer gets the fear onto S4, and then afterwards roots him when he comes back in for a second round. I mean, if I, if I was S4 in that position, that's, like, the most frustrating thing ever. When you get rooted immediately by a bear, it, it is super frustrating. Oh. He should just bring him down to half HP, forces in the... Uh... Ulti, and now turns it around some more. They've got a hell of a lot of damage. No tail. Is he in trouble now? It looks like he's going to end up dying. Nisha. Proven indeed that this is a guy to watch out for. Knows how to play some Pugna. Oh, exotic deer. That's the fear. Oh, Again, the TP out. out. He lives. Oh, my God. He was so oh. close to dying. He had a flame break stack on him as well. By the skin of his teeth. Kingwin showing their stuff. Nine to ten now. S4 is about to finish that blink dagger at least. No, oh, he again is gonna walk in. Ancient apparition blast gone again. The silence is there in a pugna, but I don't think they have the follow up. Uh, okay, now with everybody they do. They probably do here. He has Decrep in one, Stick Charges as well, pops it now, is going to be able to turn it back around. They can't kill him off. K-Core lifts up Jerex. They're going to bring him down also. It's all falling apart in the mid lane for OG. Oh, man. And they're going to lose the tower to boot. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. What is happening here? How come, for, for some reason, I feel like... OG seem to be playing, like, very sloppily. They're just trying to brute force these ganks when it's not very likely to happen and reacting very slowly to uh, to King Kingwin's rotations, it, it seems. That's definitely not the normal OG that we're used to seeing. And Resolution now probably going to get killed off if he's not careful. He's heading up here. Did they use the scan to try and find him? Doesn't look like it. They're just going to focus on the tower, take that down. And call it good as Weaver is going to try and cut the creep wave, but it doesn't matter. This tower is already gone. Man. No towers taken for OG and two tier ones taken for Kingwin. This is what the lineup was always meant to do. What does OG do from here on the, this point forward? How do they try and turn this back around? They, they want to fight right now because S4 has the Blink Dagger, but I don't, I don't know if they're actually strong enough to win these engagements. Uh-oh, Weaver gets caught out. Ice here. Blast again. He's gone. Great combination from them. And Patos, he's got S4 slowed down again, maxed out. I see Vortex right now mixed together with the Gale. S4 never stood a chance. They are getting ran over. Kingwin. 
I mean, we said it at the very beginning of this draft. This is a team to watch out for. People probably aren't used to the names, but they have been doing really well across all the European qualifiers. Yeah, definitely. This is some very confident play coming out of them right now. Oh, that's uh -oh, though. This is what they need. Yeah, they've also got the magnetized out. Great combo coming in from OG. Jerak's going to be able to bring down Alicia most likely as well. And oh, throws out the Ice Blast, but that's not going to amount to anything. So OG lose the Lich, but take down three, including the Pugna. Right as we were praising them. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, definitely what you call the caster's curse. I guess the big problem, though, is you haven't dealt with this lone druid who's been getting complete and total free farm and is halfway about to his radiance. I deserve this. Doing really well so far. And for an offlane Venomancer, I mean, Potos is doing a great job in keeping up his farm as well. Like, everyone is just very farmed on... Actually, both sides. <laughs> yeah, they're core, both are. Every core is farmed. They're getting what they need. Um, and again, it's just... We haven't been able to see a, a great instance of using that Blink Dagger because Kingwin are kind of just all over the map. Like, they're always prepared and ready for these things, to, these rotations to come in. Maybe now they can find this Rubik. Yeah, they definitely got him. But you never get something for nothing. Top lane, they're going to take the tower. Yeah, this pressure is going to continue to conti uh, come out of King Gwyn. Looks like they are feeling like very confident in their ability to just constantly pressure these towers. I think like like you mentioned before, you know, their lineup is potentially very threatening to your your, your structures, but I think that's only if you are ahead and right. do well in the laning phase, which is exactly what happened. So, you know, top lane. Well more pressure coming out. Yeah. And well it is gonna be the ancient apparition caught. He deals a good amount of damage onto S4 here and I think it slows him down enough where he's still going to die, but uh, no, S4 can't really come to defend this lane very well. Although with Arc Warden showing up, now they might be able to. Yeah, they can't quite get it. But that was a lot of damage dealt to the Tier 2 tower, down to 260 HP. They find the pick off in the Ancient Apparition, and well, OG's starting to right the ship a little bit, and actually might be able to do more. Nisha turns it back around! Resolution brought down very low, and with Patos here as well, he's going to be forced to run away. But you mentioned that Diffusal Blade. He's already got it done. Uh, do you think we're going to see that to try and, like, blow up Nisha so this can take away the Decrep? Uh, you pretty much blow up uh, anyone, really. Like, yeah. Decrep can be used to try to save his, his allies, but since he has that Diffusal Blade, not going to be much of an option anymore. Mm -hmm. So Resolution does do a Good bit of damage right now, but still trailing behind a bit. I'm yeah. gonna smoke up, see where they go with this one. Oh, it looks like they saw the smoke. Radiant are scanning. Oh, it's just kind of nuts. So they're heading down bottom instead, but they do have Ice Blast here. The Ancient Apparition. Hey, Core, do they spot him? They don't have vision. They've used Ice Blast now, and yeah, it looks like they're gonna have to stop now. Fly is still up here, can maybe do something to Exotic Deer, who does have his Relic completed on the bear. They really want to kill this Lone Druid if they can. And he's actually going to make that a possibility here in a second. They have Chain Frost, but now Exotic Deer dodging the gank, staying alive. Man, look at this play. He allows the bear to hit it while staying so far away from them. Yeah, this is some very, very patient play. And... Just great, great farming patterns around the map. This is this is how you stay alive as a core. Yeah. You mentioned the other day when we were watching uh, Kingwin play that you felt like Exotic Deer is like not a very flashy player, but a very consistent one and sort of always kind of does his job. Um, yeah, kind definitely. of example of it there. But OG now, where are they going to look to? They're smoked. Is this a good fight for them? Patos gets the pipe delivered in the middle of them ganking him and might be able to get his ulti off as well as that Ancient Apparition Blast. It's not going to be quite on the mark, but they do find Fly. Good amount of damage there as well. Do they pop that Toys and Nova? They are going to throw it out. It connects not onto everybody, 
And it looks like the rest of Kinguin are going to need to run away to try and escape this. Bear will die. And Kekorg is going to try and go for the TP out. They lose one for the Lich. I think you're okay with that as, uh, as OG. That Venomancer is so tanky. Yeah. Having that pipe, they just didn't really have the most damage. But at the end of the day, they do take him down. They lose the Lich, but they also take a bear with them. So 300 gold, yep. not too shabby. Jirax actually almost has a Blink Dagger. Yeah, he's been able to get fairly farmed. Highest net worth on a support in the game right now. And meanwhile, Resolution had to run away as he was brought down fairly low. Uh, did not want to get sniped there. Oh, Batrider? Able to dodge from that Ice Blast. And the Radiance is now done. How much is this a problem for OG? I'd say it's a pretty big problem right now. I, I think they're having an issue. I think they're having issues fighting into this lineup so far. I guess the with the pipe done also, I mean, if Kinguin want to even think about like, could they even think about trying to like push high ground a little bit here? I think so. I, I would say so. Like, they, have, they have a radius on their bear and they have a pug knight. You can chip away slowly. Right? Well, the big question mark, how do OG defend against this? As everybody gets ready to get set up, they pull in one. It's kind of a scary one. The Ice Blast is going to go out as well. Is he going to be able to get it off? No, doesn't manage to get any ulti off. It was still on cooldown for 10 seconds. So they blow up the Venomancer, and that should stop the push in its path. Resolution, they turn around. They ended up using a life drain there as well. Atos now down, caught the Batrider, S4, a little bit out of position, dying to the Radiance. They find that kill. Bear is going to live with 20 HP, and now the jump forward. Jarek's with the stun, but he didn't have Magnetize. Oh, that would have been a team wipe right there. As it is, it still might be enough. As the Bear is going to end up getting the fear back, pushes Resolution away. If Exotic Deer can get out of this one, as well as Nisha, I think they're willing to accept that. But a big win for OG. This is uh, the scariest thing about high grinding against a bad rider is that one of your teammates potentially might get pulled so far out of position that you can no longer take these fights. And that's exactly what happened there. Venomaster didn't contribute anything to the team fight because he didn't have the cooldowns he needed. Yep. And was so far into Radiant's base. OG making the best out of a very bad situation. Dyer's top tower. Yeah, I would say they sort of not necessarily dodged a bullet there, but they kind of uh, they made sure that they took advantage when there was a little bit of a misplay by Kinguin. Because I think by rights, the way that game was going, it, it looked like they could have been able to take at least a tier three tower there. Um, and now they're kind of slowed down a little bit, and OG has this other chance to sort of right the ship and get themselves. Uh, into a good position. Although that being said, they almost took down resolution right there also. Well, resolution is going to be going for a BKB next. I think once they get the BKB, then the game gets a little easier for them. At yeah. that point, only Lodri can really deal with him. Maybe Venomaster to some extent, but Venomaster is not gonna exactly going for a right click build. Going to need a lot of utility first. Oh, and they're looking to try and do the same thing they just did, and OG are going to have to come back to defend again. Maybe this time Venno will try and play a little bit more s carefully with the Dyer's positioning. We'll see how OG deal with this. Is Resolution going to TP back now as well? Can Batrider find somebody again? S4. Big man. Needs to make this work for himself. The bear are going to start to hit. They throw down the magnetic field. They're taking a lot of damage down to half HP. Ready to walk forward again. S4, he's over there to the side. He can go in for a jump, but a little bit scary. They got him with the Atos. Force it back again. There's the big magnetize coming in from Jerex. He rolls away, and Kinguin going to back out. They're still at very high HP, so no magnetize for this next round of a fight. Well, Nisha is going to have another ward to drop down here as well with the next creep wave that comes in. Oh, Courier? Almost ends up going down. Resolution was looking for it, but they're not going to find it. So they see Resolution coming in behind him. And there's going to be a catch now onto Arc Warden. He's going to be forced to have to wait. Ice Blast going to be committed in. Do they connect? No. 
They're not going to get him there. They get the courier. Now the wraparound is here as well from Resolution as well as from Jerax. They slow down. They're separated from the rest of their team. The stun is going to go, but it only connects onto the bear. And they do run him away. Very tense moment right now as OG try and hold high ground. Okay, they managed to do it. Two heroes still in enemy behind enemy lines, but they managed to take down the tower. Yeah, and there's the life drain as well. No tail. He's needing to get out of there. Do they have the fear? They break it. He's in trouble now. No tail going to go down. Buy his back immediately. They need him here. But Resolution, he's found Alicia. They throw out the ice pots. It's going to connect, but the BKB was already delivered. And now Resolution, where does he go? He doesn't have any ability to get out of there. He's starting to get ran down. Is he going to live through this? It looks like he is. Chain Frost now bouncing between Nisha Exotic Deer and a couple of creeps. They're here on the barracks. And they're going to start to lose it. This is going to be a lane of barracks going to the favor of Kingwen at 24 minutes. Ah, uh, Batrider immediately lifted. They got him. S4 is in trouble. He's going to go down. Oh, maybe possibly he's actually going to live through that one. The Magnetize has gone on so long that it's back up again. And now, with the rest of the heroes dead, Kingwen looking to be able to escape from this with their two cores. Atos. Uh, Resolution's oh. dead. That was a very impressive siege. Like, everything handled perfectly from them. It was about as good as it could have gone. And S4 now also in trouble? The Atos? Oh, good silence. That's going to keep him alive, at least for now. But he's still caught by that cold feed and blinks away before they're able to... Life Drain was still going at that point. So a buyback from the Arc Warden, Elena Barracks. If they go in and take down Roche now, I mean, what's the play for OG here? Oh, how do you even fight as OG? This is like such a farming lineup. You know, you have Arc Warden, you have a Weaver, and neither of them are even able to farm or fight. Arc Warden can do his best by split pushing, but that's it. Arc Warden comes online a little too slowly. Yeah. And he has this like, uh, what, what's the Void Stone for? I guess that that was something he picked up earlier when he wanted to go for a more farming build and realized he had to go back for a Maelstrom. Maybe the beginning of Lincoln. Yeah. All right. 26 minutes in and another round from Kingwin as they're getting ready to push in mid this time. And we saw how it went. Is there anything that OG could have done better or changed as far as defending the siege? That's kind of hard to say. It's really always going to have to start off with uh, S4 pulling in someone out of position. As long as they can have that kind of initiation, they should be fine. Anything else other than that, then the game becomes very difficult. For you. I guess the other worry is that Oh, all right, there's the pull in, but they get the lift back. The Ice Blast as well is there. They get the Poison Nova onto absolutely everybody. Pato's doing a lot of damage, but so too is the Chain Frost. The Magnetize onto all these heroes. Nisha's going to go down. Resolution trying to take down that ward as well. Three are dead in exchange for Jerex. And Exotic Deer needs to run the hell away. They still have the bugs on him. k -Core in trouble. He has Sakuchi, though, and should be able to get out as... They're going to walk away. Resolution maybe going to get lifted again. S4 could have as well if they wanted to try and get him. And they're going to get the lift up. Now the bear on top of him Are gets the serious? entangle, the fear. It happens every time. It's too many roots. And they pull the bear back before they can get the damage on it. That's how you should be playing against bear, though. You always have to assume the worst. If you think you're about to get... If you think you're about to get rooted, you're probably going to get rooted. Yeah. Well, one thing to consider is that last time they were able to hold and they won the team fight just because they have a, enough damage. And it is only a thousand gold lead in spite of being a racks up. So I'm feeling like in some ways this is actually... Oh, Nisha? They got him. They're trying to turn. They're trying to kill. They end up taking down the Pugna. Resolution making the plays with the DD. They're looking for more. Can they kill him off? There's a stun. It connects, and Arc Warden shows up as well. He's onto Alicia, taking him down. 
They're trying to get him out of there. Has the flux. The right clicks are enough. Patos also need to get out of there. Force tap to the side. The bear is trying to slow him down with Radiance, but it is not working. And OG striking back in a big way. Take down two. I don't know, my man. How do you, uh... Looks like they're capable of fighting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with that one hold, it, it looked really bad because he got caught by the Rubik, but right. I think like having them all group up like that for the Chain Frost as well as the Earth Spirit combo seems to have worked out very well. Yeah. So, this is a good target to last, so they find the Rubik. Stun him, oh, good for staff. He is going to get the Sakuchi away. Are you kidding me? By the way, he has a pipe on top of the pipe from Vettos. So they have double pipe. Not to I mention. Uh, I think it's fair. There's so much magic damage. Yeah. They need to get a Aegis, don't they? They looks like they are going to be going for it, so. Yeah. Maybe play a little more safely. Go for a pickoff, perhaps, or get some more information out, but they are just walking straight in. Yeah. And OG actually, they realize now that that's happening with wards up on the high ground and now the bugs on everybody as well. They see absolutely everything, but can they get here in time to stop it? The walk forward, they have the icy vortex down as well. There's a pugna ward down and Penguin now realizing that they need to back out. They need to be careful. Resolution pops the BKB, turns the fight. Nisha need to run away for the moment, but they are able to stun up and take down that Rubik for the moment. Can they kill him though? He has Sakuchi gonna get away. They're holding on now. Are they looking for an opening? S4. Maybe gonna get lifted? God, the Sakuchi from the Rubik is so good. And his spell seal is actually gonna wear off pretty soon. He needs to be careful with this. They're going back in to finish off Roche, though. And with the Solar Crest, can they get here in time? It doesn't look like it. They're going to be able to find and take down Aegis. Gets picked up. Nisha gets it. And now the turn to fight. No tail. His little guy is going to get brought down. And with that, maybe they can get a few on the outside. No, they're just going to have to back out. So OG, they don't manage to stop Roche from happening, but they don't die as they take it either. That's a pretty big win for them. Did they give the Pugma? Yeah, they did. Yeah. This is really important that it's on Pugma. Gonna start to take down this tier three tower. Dessa was done for the Weaver as well. And now another steal. They pull him back in. A lot of damage being dealt. Ice Blast going to connect onto several. Meanwhile, while this is going on, they're able to lift up and Try and maybe bring down the Pugna. He gets the Force Staff away, though. Still fine for the moment. Poison Nova goes out. It's connecting onto a lot of them. No Tail's going to have to back off because of this. But once again, it's another hold. Yeah. Well, I guess it's not over yet. It doesn't seem like they want to leave. I mean, without the Rubik, it's a little bit scary, but... Oh, good aggressive Force Staff forward. Look at the damage, though. That's Aegis already down. All right, maybe they can make this happen. No tail, he's walking forward. He's in front of him. The bear is dead as well. He does have a resum and hasn't used it yet. Chain Frost now getting thrown. Only hits onto one creep. No, Roll forward, Jerex. Okay, now they've got an Atos connection onto him. Ice Blast going to connect onto Jerex. No, he gets the Force Staff out. God, OG is playing this about as perfect as you can, but you can see it's just such a technical hold. not going to be an easy climb back into this game. The game's still really even, but King Winner is going to keep death falling until one at, so, at a certain stage, OG are just going to be so strong that King Win just can't do this anymore, and then and then they're going to be in trouble. So I right. feel like they're kind of on the timer at this point with how, they were, how they've been playing. They even pop double Mango to get back up the mana to go again, and they want to try and catch out Resolution. Ooh, this could be big. Can they get him? Oh, K Core, not quite there. And now S4, they caught him with the Atos, but they can't do it. They dropped that ward as well. And I think that King would need to back out and maybe go mid or 
do something, because they're going to get picked apart by this Weaver otherwise. Resolution did a great job in catching up, and now he has the, uh, the items he needs to do enough damage in these team fights. And like you said, he's, uh, he's like a 2,000 something gold. He's going to get an MKB fairly soon as well. Yeah. All right, they got the Pugna, but gonna end up pulling it back in the Ice Blast, the Nova. I think it might be enough. They already take down the tower and look at OG. They're gonna take so much damage from this. Nisha now starting to drain as well from Resolution. It looks like that's gonna be the end of it, but that was like a ton of ultimates out. And I think that they get the barracks with this because OG can't heal up fast enough. So much damage being dealt to this tower, to this barracks. They catch Resolution. He's able to get the time lapse off just barely. The bear, is it going to do it? 16 HP. They need to kill it off, and they will. They commit the second bear to it as well. K-Core getting taken down as well. No tail did enough damage. It's the second melee. But like you said, I, I feel like they almost need to like end the game right now because uh, OG, I don't think, cares about another melee racks. Like, they can hold. Well, we'll see what the case if that is actually the case. See if King Wen decide to just continuously throw themselves at the rack until Megas are a thing. I mean, even with Megas though, you've got like the Mjolnir done on Arc Warden. Bat Rider is okay at clearing them. Do, do you think that it's like the death sentence for OG if they get Megad? It'll be it'll be pretty bad. I mean, like you said, they can clear creeps, but that's just creeps. Right. And if you try to fight the creeps with the heroes, I mean, if you're Megat at this point of the game, Radiant I feel like you're fighting standing. a six hero or a seven hero. That's how I see it. Well, Radiant Scan, they don't hit on that, but Alicia, maybe the one that gets punished? No. Instead, they found the Pugna. I don't know if that's going to work. The Ice Blast? It only connected onto two, and they don't have any follow up. Alicia's going to fall, and Pato's also in trouble. He has a four staff, can get to the low ground. The roll by Jerax is a little bit off the mark as well. The jump forward, Pato's. It's a four man Gale, but to no avail. As this is going to be OG striking back in a big way with three dead and buyback only on two. What are they going to do? Bear Man down bottom. He's going to try and push this out and see if he can rat him out while this is going on. But OG, they do damage. So far, it's one buyback. They're I'm, making it work, though. Oh, but the Scylla Bear, he's cutting the wave. And he also is going to have a creep wave in there from bottom. This There's is actually... Damage. This is quite bad. Uh, Bear is going to hit your tower really hard. Oh, my God. It's gone. All right. Jerex has found him, but that was a lot of freaking damage and already a tier three down. It looks like Lone Druid is going to fall, but he forces absolutely everybody back. And Resolution, is he going to live through this? It looks like he will. All right. OG showing signs of life. They're reaching that stage where it's just going to become too hard for Kingwin to deal with them. And they don't have a lot of heroes to try and break TPs so that the bear can go for the backdoor plays. But it just goes to show how quickly these things can turn. And even, I, I guess the other problem is that if they do get mega eventually the Lone Druid is going to be able to, like, threaten your Tier 4s and Ancients as well. S4. Oh, he's caught out of position. Again, the four Staff play. Very, very key. But he is maybe going to end up dying. Nonetheless, Jarek gets the silence. That's going to keep S4 alive for the moment. Can King wouldn't get away in time. It looks like they will. God, that damage on Anisha. Tranquil boots have so much value, and your opponents just have nothing but a ton of spells to throw at you from a distance. He never got his Tranquil to be activated by all of these spells, and a lot of that region, like, may have been the thing that saved them there. Yeah. Has fallen. Well, the Lone Druid Bear has AC... Uh, Maelstorm, as well as Midas and the Radiance. Might be thinking about getting towards those bots later as well. To allow for... I guess it'd probably have to be Aghanim's first, huh? Yeah, I would think so. Oh, Rezo? Do they have a gem or anything like that? Uh, Ancient Apparition, 
Stolen Sakuchi again. He has MKB now, though. Resolution is very, very strong. So is No Tail. They have. This might be what they need. These might be the items they need to, to, to fight, fight with. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a problem. I, I guess it's always going to come down to a structural warfare, though, which is what we're going to have to keep our eyes on: is how well are King Gwen able to keep these lanes pushed out and force OG inside their own base. Radiant are scanning. What have we here? No tail doing his best to split push. Does have the shadow blade on his main hero. Alicia also, I mean, we've seen it time and again, the defensive force staffs by the rest of the OG team. God, if they end up in one bad team fight, though, they do catch Nisha. The counter initiation comes out. They get the ice blast. Chain Frost is bouncing, but it looks like they're going to kill off Pugna. Nonetheless, now running out of there, they've got their eyes onto this Pato's Venomancer. He gets the Poison Nova off, but I don't know if that's really going to end up mattering all that much. That's going to be... Alicia running away. Exotic Deer also trying to get out of there. Do you think that they need to take these fights differently? Like, do we need to see Exotic Deer split pushing with this bear? Uh, I, I, feel like, I feel like it's so hard to split push unless you have Deceptor. Yeah. Because I think, I think OG, if they notice that you're doing something like that, they all just send heroes down there to just kick off your bear every single time. So it's a really tough call for for Kingwin right now. It's just getting seems to be getting harder and harder as time passes by. Well, and they are going for the BKB, so I think the goal here is to eventually force Batrider to have to lasso the bear, um, because otherwise they won't be able to take it down. But I guess, like you were saying, Resolution might do enough damage now that he can just kill it. Hmm. 40 minutes in, a 9,000 net worth lead for OG with almost 25,000 experience lead for them. But still, it feels like 1-1 one, one team fight by Kingwin. And they could take the whole base. The question is, how do they do that? What's what's their sort of goals going to be? And how do OG make sure they don't lose the team fight? I feel like it's just a little too hard for Kingwin to actually make that happen at this point. They're up in terms of structures, but... I think, given enough time, OG are just going to win this game in the end because they're, you're talking about breaking their base with Aegis. They have Aegis Cheese as well as buyback on all of their cores. It, right. It's like very unlikely for that to happen. So, I mean, honestly, I'm not too sure what to expect out of Kingwin to win this game. It, it just looks so difficult. Yeah, I mean, they're going Mask of Madness in the hopes that and they'll have enough damage to deal with it. But bottom lane, No-Tail does have bots, but they also have Nisha in front of him. They catch the Ice Blast and force the BKB TP. That was the 10 second one as well. Oh, they killed the bear. Resummon. Maybe head down bottom now. But top lane is where they're putting the pressure on. And No-Tail going to be able to take a lot of damage onto that tier 3 tower top. Nisha trying to push out bottom. Again, you break back toward protection and give Exotic Deer a little bit of time on these structures. With Mask of Madness. Not easy. He actually switches up. He is going the Ags. That's, I, I really like that decision. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the only choice he has now. And no tell, he's going to be going for that sheep stick. Actually has enough for it. He wants to buy it. Illusion. But this is the kind of game we're in now. We're, yeah. we're in for the long haul. Some, some classic uh, Arc Warden game. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no tail going to walk forward. Maybe just kill off Kcor. He might just die. Nah, he's gonna decrypt and now he's gonna run away. Yeah, it's the strength of that hero. Well. Lone Druid picks up the Ags, and the bear now is going to run at No Tail's face. And he actually doesn't have the sheep stick on him yet. 
Run away from me. I'm an angry bear. Uh. Well, he wanted to steal Sakuchi. And he did, but he paid for it. Value. Right, way to pull that bear back there. 44 minutes in, and it does feel like OG are, you know, with all, the arc and pushing out all the lanes, it's really, really hard for King Gwen to get anything done. They're just fully contained inside their base. They're going to have to win a team fight here if they want any hope of getting out of there. It's just so difficult because yeah. no, no tell has reached that stage where he just boosts the travels, makes copies, every lane is always shoved in, and they're just forced to sit inside their base now. Yeah. No tail, he walks forward. That's gonna be a initiation on the Pathos. He gets decrept, and no tail just gonna hit the tower. They use a good bit of damage. That bear eats him up. Yeah, but while all of this is happening, I mean, look at no tail. He's yeah, he's like, whatever. I'm just gonna sit down here. I'm gonna keep hitting this tier two. And eventually, all of your lanes are going to be vulnerable. Yeah. And, I mean, even having that level 25 talent now on the Weaver, getting the added movement speed, they are heading down bottom. The bear is going to start hitting No-Tail, but it just does not have enough damage. And, well, they're going to try and push out the creep wave with this. I don't know if it's going to work, though. That's the problem. He can just send it out again, and the bear is gone. Went for the lifesteal talent as well, 30%. Arc Warden walks forward. They take down the creep that he was TPing on. But it's the most Pyrrhic of victories. There is just nothing for them to do here. And now... We just watch the slow siege coming out of OG. They did end up losing the Aegis. So there is a possibility for things to be done. What that is, though, is kind of a question mark at this point. I mean, just the, the biggest issue I see here is none of the dire side have buyback. They bought bought out. The only people who do are Ancient Apparition and Pugna. I don't think that's going to be enough to, to hold this. Yeah. They pop the BKB. Scotty done for the Weaver as well. And they get the Sheep Sick now onto Alicia. Lotus Orb to take it off. But, I mean, this is, this is really bad. Devil damage. What have we here? All right, Patos, he's getting close to his Aghanim Scepter just to deal the most damage he can with the Poison Nova. Resolution pops BKB, goes in, takes down the tier three tower. It is gone. Oh boy, he has a double damage as well. This yeah. is just some death by a thousand cut stuff right here. Yeah. There's just nothing to do. There's, there's literally nothing they can do except win a team fight that OG aren't even gonna take. OG are not going to risk anything, and they're slowly going to take this building apart. They're slowly going to take the entire map apart, and King Gwen just can't do anything to stop it. And now no -Tail has a butterfly. He's pretty freaking huge. Yep. I'm surprised um, he's hitting the melee racks, though. Should be hitting the range racks. Some yeah. of that unhealable damage, as they say in NA. It's the way to be. It's gotta happen. It's, who started saying that? Was it Grant? I'm pretty sure it was Grant. It might have been. Uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Grant actually cracks me up. Grant, Grant says the funniest stuff. I, I had a lot, a lot of fun watching their, uh, their King's Cup. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, a lot of fun to check that one out. Um, I don't think we saw an Arc Warden once in those games. Maybe might have. I, I could be wrong about that. But this is. This is a sad way to end it for King Win. I mean, compared to how good it looked for a little while there, they were taking barracks, they were doing all that stuff. Now 20,000 gold almost behind and roughly the 28,000 experience. And the OG just going to keep on farming and keep on building up that net worth lead until they are literally unkillable. And they're going to chase down the bear. I mean, is there ever any worry that eventually you get into items or you, like, maybe see OG get a little bit sloppy with their play and then you can kill them off? Or do you not think so? 
Uh, the only way I see OG losing this game is if they decide to go high ground and all of them disconnect their mouse and keyboards. <laughs> okay. So that they can't even pause the game. Hey, we got a Dagon for Nisha. That's the, uh... I'm, was that the second bear? Yeah, that's two bears. So, uh, both bears are dead. Lone Druid. Not having a bear. He says, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time I am for the late certain. OG must yeah. know that there's no no bear. Sorry, new meta. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think the not banning Arc Warden was a problem. What was their last ban? I don't even remember. All right, that was a years ago. Yeah. Well, oh, Arc Warden goes in. Oh yeah, this is just some Arc. Oh wait a minute though. Look at this. Look at K-Core's steel. He took Magnetic Field himself. So Arc Warden versus Arc Warden, apparently. Assisted by Arc Warden. <laughs> Nobody does nothing. damage. <laughs> it means nothing. He, I mean, he took the tower already, so... Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this. Oh, here we go. We All right. Nisha. They got one. Are they going to disconnect their computers? Nope. They, they got a kill. Buy back right, from the pug now. back immediately. Look at this damage. Oh boy, this all right. This is done for. It's time to get Magnetized out. Magnetized game switched around as well. They are gonna try and do anything at all to hold on, but it really doesn't feel like anything is gonna be enough. Well, no. <laughs> well, eh, no. Maybe no. Not happening. The magnetized lasted six years, but these barracks are not gonna last six seconds at the rate that they're going. Ugh. Well, they lost to barracks, which means it's easier to hold this barracks. Right? I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I think, <laughs> I, I mean, the thing the thing is, like, there's always something else to go for. Oh, oh they're going to go. God. Oh, counterplay may be a possibility, but it's only a bat rider. And, well, he's not even going to go down for free as they take down the Pugna. Now they take down another. Resolution gonna run away. The stun on the two, and no way to stop it. The saddest of days. And well, now No Tail goes up top. He does show his real hero for a moment. It doesn't matter. There's the sheep stick. They connect. Do they get any roots? The roots were all used up earlier, and the bear can't get any now. Trying to catch up, but the sheep stick comes out. Now they got the bear controlled. He's gonna die. No bear for 70 seconds. Pato's, oh, Pato's. Gale, not happening. I think he's dead. Nope. You were saying this game was over a long time ago, and I'm starting to understand what you are meaning now. I mean, it's just the patient play from, from OG. I mean, they've been <laughs> through this before. In fact, this is a classic OG game, honestly. Classic OG game. They take it. Game number one. 51 minutes, 40 to 22. At moments, it felt like King Gwen had the upper hand, but Arcord proved to be Arcord in the end. They had their window of opportunity, and unfortunately for them, just unable to uh, grasp that. It's 